Hi, welcome to our video on meiosis, a necessary prerequisite for sexual life cycles. You probably think about sexual life cycles as resembling something like the image all the way over on the left with lizards. But what you need to understand is that sex is much more diverse than that. Many organisms engage in sexual life cycles, including plants, fungi, and many unicellular organisms as well. Without exception, and however you do it, sexual reproduction depends on meiosis. The question that we're going to look at in this video is how does meiosis enable sexual reproduction? We're going to look at sexual life cycles, then we're going to look at an overview of meiosis, and then we're going to consider questions of how meiosis increases the amount of variation that we see in sexually reproducing organisms. Let's begin with a discussion of sexual life cycles. This is what sex is. No matter what you think about when you think about it, this is the universality of sex. Sexually reproducing organisms have two main stages in their life cycle. They have a haploid phase when they have one copy of each chromosome in their cells. Haploid cells come together during the process of fertilization, which leads to a diploid phase when there are two copies of each chromosome in their cells. The process of meiosis is the process by which the diploid phase creates the haploid cells that are necessary to continue the haploid phase and continue the sexual life cycle. There's a large variety of sexual life cycles. Sexually reproducing organisms exist in a variety of different life cycles. Diplontic organisms are ones where the multicellular stage of the organism is exclusively diploid, as shown here by these mice. But of course, we and all animals are diplontic in terms of our sexual life cycles. Haplontic stages are the exact opposite. In a haplontic stage, the multicellular stage of the organism is exclusively made out of haploid cells. The graphic is showing this in a microscopic algae known as Ulothrix, but fungi, like mushrooms, are generally haplontic as well. Or they can be haplodiplontic, where there are multicellular stages for both the haploid form and the diploid form. This is also sometimes referred to as the alternation of generations, and it's commonly seen in certain lineages of plants, for instance, the ferns that this diagram is showing. Regardless of the specifics of the sexual life cycle, meiosis is always required. This diagram shows what happens to the number of chromosomes over the course of meiosis using our shorthand of N as the haploid number. Meiosis requires two rounds of cell division with no replication of DNA in between them. You see the first round of cell division in the first two sets of arrows here, taking us from 2N to a 4N cell to two 2N daughter cells. To go from those two diploid daughter cells to four haploid gametes requires another round of cell division, but the DNA is not copied before starting that second round of cell division. The result is that we'll get four genetically unique haploid gametes that are produced, and these gametes are what are used in the process of fertilization. Because there are two rounds of cell division in meiosis, we break them up into meiosis one and meiosis two. Most of the unique events that happen during meiosis happen during meiosis one. We're gonna look at two specific examples. Prophase one is where crossing over occurs. During crossing over, homologous pairs of chromosomes exchange genetic material. Homologous pairs is a term that refers to the chromosomes of the same number that come from each parent. Sexually reproducing organisms get one copy of each chromosome from one parent and one copy of each chromosome from the other parent. The two matching copies of, of each chromosome from each parent are referred to as the homologous pairs. If we were to number the chromosomes in this example, we might number them one, two, and three, with the red chromosomes representing chromosome one, two, and three from one parent, and the blue chromosomes representing chromosome one, two, and three from the other parent. During crossing over, the homologous pairs physically associate and exchange genetic material between them. The result is that each chromosome winds up being a combination of the genetic material from each of the parents of the organism in which meiosis is occurring. The next unique thing that happens during meiosis that we're going to focus on happens during metaphase one. During metaphase one, the homologous pairs of chromosomes align at the middle of the cell or the metaphase plate while still attached to each other from the crossing over process. Independent assortment refers to the fact that each pair of chromosomes aligns independently of each other pair. This example is showing us one possible alignment of homologous pairs. In reality, there are eight different equally likely arrangements of these three sets of homologous pairs that could happen during metaphase. That's what independent assortment means. Because the chromosomes align differently during metaphase, it's easy to determine what phase of the process we're in, depending upon the arrangement of the chromosomes that we see. Notice that it's only in meiosis one where the chromosomes align at the metaphase plate still attached to their homologous pairs. In metaphase of mitosis and in metaphase of meiosis two, the chromosomes align at the metaphase plate individually or in single file. 
The last major difference between meiosis and mitosis is that there is no replication of DNA between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. This is absolutely crucial in order to produce haploid gametes at the end of meiosis 2, each with half of the normal amount of DNA. That's our tour of meiosis, but before we wrap, we should really consider how meiosis and sexual reproduction work together to increase variation in sexually reproducing organisms. We can mathematically model this using humans as an example. Humans have a haploid number of 23, which means that they have 23 pairs of chromosomes. The number of unique human gametes that one person can produce by randomly putting one of each member of those 23 pairs into a gamete is mathematically represented as 2 to the 23rd power, which is 8.3 million possible unique gametes, just by randomly assorting one of each member of the homologous pair into the gametes that the person produces. That's a pretty big number, but it's made even larger when we consider fertilization. During fertilization, one of those approximately 8.3 million gametes is going to get together with one of the approximately 8.3 million combinations in the gamete produced by the other parent. We can mathematically model, model this by multiplying 2 to the 23rd power by itself, which leads to 70 trillion different possible genetic combinations in humans as a result of meiosis followed by fertilization. But of course, that does not account for the fact that during meiosis, each chromosome has undergone crossing over and is an essentially random combination of genetic material from the two parent chromosomes in the organism that produced the gamete. The end result being that the total amount of variation when we finally put it all together is functionally infinite in humans or in any other sexually reproducing organism. This kind of modeling really helps to establish the amazing amount of variation that's present in sexually reproducing organisms as a function of meiosis and sexual life cycles. Thanks so much for watching our video on meiosis. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can explain why sexual reproduction requires meiosis and fertilization. Make sure that you can explain how the events of meiosis lead to the production of four genetically unique gametes. Make sure that you can compare and contrast the stages of meiosis and mitosis if you're given pictures. And finally, make sure that you can explain how meiosis and sexual reproduction generate variation in a species. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.